So you've probably heard about the marshmallow test. You can't really avoid it if you're on social media. People are doing it with their babies, with their dogs, even with their dragons. It goes something like this. You put a marshmallow or a lolly or a dog biscuit or a worm, depending on the species, in front of the subject, tell her that she can have a second one if she can go a certain period without eating the first one and then leave the room for a bit. If they haven't eaten the treat when you get back, they get a clap or a well done or a good girl and everyone smiles and everyone's happy. Supposedly, kids who are better at delaying gratification are more likely to be successful later in life or something along those lines and parents feel proud and congratulate themselves for making such good humans or dogs or lizards or whatever. In the original study, the researchers then went back to the parents of these kids about 10 years later and got them to complete a bunch of questions about their children as adolescents related to coping, scholastic aptitude, and cognitive competencies. The authors posited that the correlations they found between delaying gratification and their parents' assessment of the children as adolescents demonstrated the importance of willpower and executive function. Kind of. And if you read the paper, there's a lot more caveats than you might have read about it in an online article or on social media. Anyway, fast forward to 2018 and a team of researchers set out to replicate this study and uncovered something quite profound. What the 2018 study and other subsequent studies suggest is that the capacity to hold out for a second marshmallow is shaped mostly by a child's social and economic background and in turn that that background, not the ability to delay gratification, is what's behind kids' long-term success. Once they adjusted for factors like household income, mother's education and home environment at age three, the effect disappeared. And more variations of that study suggested that it was whether the children thought they could trust the promise of the second treat that made a significant difference in whether and how long they were willing to hold off for the reward. So the experience of a consistently well-stocked fridge or pantry makes it easier to believe it when you're told that a bigger reward awaits those who can resist eating the marshmallow right away. In other words, if you're well off in a stable home and haven't experienced much long-term trauma, then you tend to believe that you'll get the things you want even if you wait. But a precarious and unstable existence forces you to live in the moment simply because the future is so uncertain. In the context of the marshmallow, a second marshmallow feels irrelevant when a child thinks that the first one might vanish. Willpower and grit are not just personal characteristics that exist in a vacuum devoid of social reality. They come from experience of stability and availability. And yes, giving people hope can work, but only when it's realistic and not an empty promise.